When I do YouTube videos, I make a lot of mistakes. As a result, I needed to come up with various techniques to deal with this audio that I didn't want. There are three techniques that I use most frequently. I'm not saying they're the best, and there are probably others. The first I'm going to cover is the most destructive, and therefore not a big fan of it, don't use it very often, but it's good for taking out sections or for just completely deleting audio altogether. The easiest thing to do is to right click, click unlink, click the delete key on your keyboard, problem solved. As you can tell though, that's highly destructive. You don't get that audio back from that clip. You'd either have to redrag the clip down or yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Control Z to bring it back. Control Z again to tie them together, to relink them. The other way, which is also destructive, is to use the razor tool. If you have sections like this, where it's just dead air time, you can click there, click there, go back to the selection tool, select it, delete or do a ripple delete which will pull them together again destructive it's not horrible because it cleans up the audio by taking out the dead spaces the problem is it could definitely mess with the video the second one which works better but I'm also not particularly fond of is to take the clip in edit it or modify it in audition. That is a plus because you get more options. You can do significantly more effects and healing and the like, but here's the result and I'll do a real edit to show you why I'm not a fan of it. We have three distinct sections. I want to take this section and I don't want to delete it. I want to leave the timing in there, but I want to get rid of the waveforms. The best way I found to do that is to highlight the selection, right click, or use the keyboard shortcut control plus U and click auto heal selection. Now when you save this, it'll update the waveform in Premiere Pro, which is excellent. And as you can see, instead of a selection being completely flatlined and muted, it still looks natural. The thing I didn't like was by using Audition, it created a number of additional WAV files. Not really my favorite. I kind of wanted to keep it self-contained within Premiere Pro. The third, and the one that I tend to use almost exclusively, is to use keyframes to mute out sections of audio. I go in and individually hunt down parts of the audio I don't like, and silence them or I guess tone down the audio level of that particular area. And you'll be able to tell from this section right here. So go up. I would zoom in, activate the selection, which it's already activated because it's white. Click on the timeline to where you want to place it. Click a keyframe, use the arrow key Add another keyframe. So go. You can tell from the scrubbing that this is the transition. So, because I've done it so many times, it tends to look like this. You just memorize waveforms when you do it hundreds of times. Add a keyframe here. Add a keyframe there. Hold shift and select both inner keyframes. Drag them down. This will essentially be a mute. I've also tried doing it to slightly above that to give a similar background noise sound. It works, either way. Zoom out a little bit. Test it. Go up to the... I've just muted the so without having to do any additional editing in Audition, which creates a bunch of extra WAV files. Also, I didn't destructively cut anything out. Go up to the, it's the least destructive, easiest to do, and keeps everything in one place for your Premiere Pro project. Hopefully these three different techniques helped you out. 
Completely destructive, don't recommend. Uses Audition, which is an external application, creates a bunch of WAV files. It's okay. It's good if you have very specific needs or want to apply very distinct effects. But this by far seems to be the best option, which is to just go in, add a couple of keyframes, and then mute out the section that you want to mute out. I hope this video helps you out. Thank you for watching.